Hello everybody, welcome to another solo adventurer with me, Christian Schiller, where I play a solo role-playing game, storytelling game, interactive fiction game, solo something rather, um, and just see where I get to in about 45 minutes to an hour. I'm going to go back to doing a much more of a storytelling game today. I'm not completely sure how long this will be, probably not so long. And I hope you all enjoy it. So what am I going to play today? I'm just, you can see, volume is slightly low. I'm just going to quickly adjust that volume. Bum, 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 bum. I hope everybody is well. If you enjoy what you watch, then you can find more on twitch.tv slash the solo adventurer, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Twitter, bizarrely. Uh, and many other places, and you can find more about me at christianchiller.com. But let's get started. So, today we're going to be playing Quill. To zoom in a bit here, check everything is. I got a lot of windows here today. <laughs> okay. We have the document window. We have the dice window. I forgot to bring physical dice with me. And we have the letter window. Quill is a letter writing role playing game for a single player, as you can see. Perfect. Um, by Scott Malthouse from Trollish Delver Games from about two years ago. And I know I need 3D6, hence I have them down here. I think I'll just make them a little larger. Do, do, do. There we go. That looks a bit better. Fantastic. And I'm going to need to write my letter somewhere, which will be here. Let's check the font size. Will be see, also would be useful to spell things properly, wouldn't it? I know that is nowhere near large enough. So forgive that keyboard. Actually, it just reminded me, there's a Mac program I was going to test for reducing keyboard click clack that I haven't installed yet. <laughs> okay, that looks good, I think. All right. So let's have a look through the, I won't read it. This is the introduction, we don't need to really go through that. So it's a role-playing game of letters for a single player. It might sound quite strange. I think if you go back and look at Gentleman Bandit, it's gonna be something similar to that and um, we take on the role of a letter writer who for whatever reason is scribbling a letter to a recipient we have a series of attributes to determine how we can accomplish a task and uh, these oops hello, these include where did it go these include I like this penmanship language and heart very nice um, each tribute is important and determines the outcome. I just realized that when I'm zoomed in, that is what makes that problematic. When we're rolling for combat, we roll a little for how eloquent we write, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and solo. Okay. Na our aim is to impress the recipient. I will do my best to responding favorably through deft use of language and presentation and rolling dice to whether you succeed with the words. <laughs> I like it. All right, so what do we need? We need, oh, at least three six-sided dice. That's good. We might need more. I can always quickly add more, so that's fine. Uh, a pen or a pencil, one of the scenarios from the book, one of the supplements. Go to your favorite quiet spot and pour a hot drink. Mm, that's not really gonna happen here. And my coffee cup is empty. It's a bit late for coffee now. So it's taking place in Quillia, a quasi medieval uh, land with light fantasy elements. Green and pleasant land, we're hikings. I think we, we get the impression, get the picture. Um, create a character. Once we've chosen a character, we select a skill and then select a scenario. Okay, so characters. And if you're joining me in chat, Feel free to just uh, give me suggestions on characters and skills and things like that as we go through. Um, so penmanship is our aesthetic style of writing. 
language is how eloquent we are. And heart is the sheer emotion and effort we imbue in our letters. Okay. I see. So each attribute is poor, average, or good. And that determines how many dice we roll. All right. Brilliant. So one, two, and three. Makes sense. The monk. Good, average, and poor. So good with penmanship. Okay. The knight. Average penmanship. Language poor. Heart good. Makes sense. The poet. Uh, penmanship poor, language good, heart average. The aristocrat. So they all have a good, poor, and an average, basically. <laughs> uh, the scholar. I think I would rather have language and heart better than poor. Uh, a courtier. I think I think I would rather have my language as good. So, and my heart as average. So that would be the poet. That makes sense. We are going to be a poet. I am a poet. Let's um, copy and paste that in. So. so we have a reference there. So I don't have to keep flipping backwards and forwards. Might just make those smaller because they're. Oh, hang on. Just those bits smaller. Ah, okay, won't let me. All right, fine, ignore that. Um, we'll just keep it there for now. Okay, so now we choose our skills. Maybe we should get a quick bit of flavor text here. I think we understand what a poet is. A master of a language, able to create beauty with just a quill and a parchment. A uh, poet is more concerned with words than how they are presented. Makes sense. I'd rather read them out loud, I think, than write them down. Skill. Chosen a character intersects a skill. They can be used once per scenario. You're a born leader, illumination, augmentation. That's it, okay. Um, I like augmentation, I think. Let's uh, pop that in. I mean, really, I should be uh, probably doing this on the, the the iPad with an Apple Pencil instead. <laughs> so we can actually do proper penship, but uh, then I wouldn't have the dice. And it's too late now. <laughs> I do have a Wacom tablet here, but it's not quite the... Well, actually, it could be the same, but it's too late to start setting that up, I think. Okay. Uh, once. Okay, great. Rules. Playing the game. A game of Quill begins with a scenario, which you can find further in this book. It sets out who you're writing to and why you're writing to them, the profile. Any special rules and the words that you'll be using, the ink pot. Write a letter using the word in the ink pot and get the highest score at the end of the scenario. You have five paragraphs to achieve this. In each paragraph, you must use one of the words. One, so five paragraphs, one, one of them per ink pot. You can augment words with flourishes to gain extra points, and after each paragraph, you must make a penmanship test to find out how well presented it is. This is where I will be lackluster. It's entirely up to you what you want to write, as long as you're following the story. Okay. Uh, profile is the first thing you read. The recipient and the explanation. Rules of correspondence, any special rules. So we only test penmanship, not other things. Okay. Ink pot contains all the words you can use. First word is the inferior word, and the second is the superior word. The aim is to fill your letter with superior words as you score points. Inferior words do not. So I'm guessing that means I get to choose the word, I suppose. I to score points. Use superior words. Be a successful in a penmanship test. Not so good for me. Flourish words with adjectives or adverbs using heart tests. A flourished superior word is worth... So we have to test them or... Hmm. 
And you want to add a word. Okay, right. So we want to add a word from the um, ink pot. We roll a language dice. A five or six is a success. You can add a superior word and gain a point. Anything lower, and you must add an inferior word. All right, okay. So we can't choose the word we use. Okay, fair enough. Flourishes, adding adverbs to augment word. You must make a heart test first. And on a five or six, we can add flourishes. Right. The word you've augmented is a superior word. You score two points for the augmentation or for the word plus the augmentation. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter, I suppose. The word is an inferior word. You do not score any points and must reduce your total score by one, representing a clunky writing style. So I'm adverbing and flourishing bad words, I guess. Interesting. And then when we finish paragraph, we do a penmanship test. Okay. All right. I would kind of like to have this page um, separated. You can always do that in Acrobat, but not in... Um, uh, so page 18 and 19. Remember that. Scoring, we'll get to later. Oh, here's a rule summary. There we go. Um, I might even take a screenshot <laughs> of that. Uh. Oopsie daisy. I have separate things for my um, screenshots. I might just I was a victim of that. Bear with me. <laughs> ah. We'll we'll just uh, damn. Hang on. You don't want to see me playing around with that. Hang on one second. Let's just fix that up. I was intending to fix that at some point anyway. Now is a perfect time. Well, now would have been a perfect time. I'm not going to do it now. <laughs> okay, I want that picture. There we go. Voila. Just to have a nice little summary, should we need it. I'll hide that for now, though. Actually, in fact, what I will do is I will put it behind there. So we know it's there. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit too much on the screen, I think. Okay. Scenarios. The Archduke. The Art Dealer. Any suggestions anyone would like me to take? Just pop it in the uh, comments. I'm keeping an eye on them. The Father. The King. All right. The King. The Father. The art dealer, the archduke. I know what I'm leaning towards, but I'll just give you a couple of seconds for anyone who um, feels like giving their opinion. I am leaning towards the father. I'm corresponding with Mr. Anthony Winsborough, an old friend of mine whose son, Rupert, was found dead near your residences. Sounds convenient. You're writing to inform Anthony of his son's death. You must be sensitive and explain what happened and how you found Rupert. Anthony would prefer to hear this news from a person of the cloth. Monks and nuns gain extra dice when rolling language tests. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Not a poet. <laughs> uh, okay, great. So... We begin with, I just realized, I have two screens. You can't see my second screen. I can move these rules over here. Then you don't have to be, don't have to see them. <laughs> just occurred to me. Okay. Um, so first we do a language test. Also occurred to me. I can move these. And oh, no, I think I'll keep this up here, actually. So you can see who we are and the augmentation, etc. Let's just move down a few lines. Okay. So, first we need to do a language test to see um, what word we get. So, I need to remove a dice. 
Yeah. Oh no. Ah, whoops. So, let's roll those dice. We've got two fives. So I'm guessing just anything as a success. So that means we get to pick a superior word. So, your boy. Be good to spell it right, wouldn't it? <laughs> For some strange reason. Oh, there we go. Your boy. I'm going to mark that as a superior word. Uh, you know what we should also do here? Let's make this <laughs> um, oh it changes everything that's really annoying but there we go uh, it's not very readable though is it <laughs> that's my only concern uh, no um I am a poet, so <laughs> uh, I've got a bad feeling I'm going to get distracted by this if I go too much further. Oh, that, that'll do. That's nice. Okay. Your boy. Superior word. Um, okay. My sincere... Mr. Wins. You know what? I can't even read this, so, <laughs> so I will change that font. <laughs> Sorry, I can't even read what I'm writing. So. <laughs> uh, oh, this looks okay. That seems appropriate. I take great dis pleasure and now, so I want to use a flourish. So I'm going to use a heart test, which for me is three dice. We've got a six and a five, so I can add one uh, with great displeasure and um, heaviness of heart. I found your uh, dear boy. So if I understand, um, this means, this is where I was a little unclear, that's two points or three points. That's where I'm not entirely sure. Let's just very quickly check that. That's not mentioned here. Um, Oh, you have to do it before. Okay, well, all right then. <laughs> I won't do that. Okay, fine. It's got two points. Okay, all right, that's my mistake. I should have done that earlier. That's fine. Okay. I found your boy uh, beneath my kitchen window so i think that is the end of my first paragraph so i now uh use a penmanship test which is only one for me so that's a six brilliant um Make a penmanship test, and it succeeds. The rule summary does not tell me what succeeds means. So I just have to remind myself again, sorry. Uh, and then I think we're good to go. Uh, and gain an additional point. Okay, great. Okay. So, as far as I understand, that means that this paragraph is two points or three points? That's what I just want to understand. So, 
one point. So we have one point plus one point. Okay, great. So let's just do the paragraphs as we go. I think it's probably easier. Now we can really get into the flow. Okay. Okay. So next we want to go for corpse or body. Um, I want to make a heart test to see if I can add a flourish. Uh, let's see. A five and a two. I can add a flourish. Excellent. Um, and so now I need to see if I to get an inferior word or a superior word. Um, and this is a language test, which is good for me. So actually I should roll three dice. I got that wrong last time. It doesn't really matter too much. So that's just a five and a six. These dice are rolling very well for me. So I get a flourish and a superior word. So, um, I did discover his uh, beautiful corpse. Sounds a bit weird. Um, <laughs> his peaceful corpse beneath. The window while I was airing a, as I was cooling a pie in the evening air. Nice. So now we again do a penmanship test for the, yeah, I think we know by now. Um, so we just want to roll one dice. It's a six. I'm doing very, very well. <laughs> so I actually get three points here. Wow. Doing well. Doing well. Okay. Next. Uh, Bawdy House Drinking Establishment. Now I thought we wrote five paragraphs. So I'm slightly confused. Uh... So I get to pick the words, I guess. Okay, all right, all right. I don't think bawdy house drinking establishment quite makes sense. Um, oh, actually. I think I will go for an attempt for the police, a guard or the police here. So firstly, I want to see if I can do a flourish, which for me is average, so two dice, six again, so I can flourish it, and we want to see if we get an inferior or superior word, um, which is good, so three dice, I feel like uh, I'm doing very well, I'm not quite sure what dice that is, uh, <laughs> what was that? So a six and a five, excellent. So we can have a guard and we can add a flourish. I did immediately make haste to the honorable um, guard of my local ward who came with haste to inspect the corpse. Okay, good. Now we do a penmanship test. That is a fail, so just two points. I feel like I'm scoring very high, but we'll see. <laughs> so we have two more paragraphs, okay. Um, I'm gonna go for brutal or harrowing here. So firstly, we see if we can do a flourish, which heart is average, so two dice. Let's roll those dice. We have a four and a five. Again, I am rolling exceptionally well here. So um, we get to add a flourish, and I'm gonna see if we can 
and I've done it the wrong way around it. Oh, no, 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 language is good. Fine, that's good, good. And I want to see if I'm going to get brutal or harrowing. So, um, that is three dice. We actually failed. So we get a uh, brutal instead. But we had to add a flourish. So, the guard did report that the death was ooh, was um, was what could we add I'm, I'm kind of was um, this isn't very good but it's the best I can think of <laughs> grimly brutal kind of sounds horrible actually <laughs> was grimly brutal, but he died swiftly. Swiftly and um, honorably again. Honorably again feels a bit much. Uh, and uh, ah, defending him self fiercely okay so we need to do a penmanship which for me is just one that's a fail so we didn't we got a um it's just one point no it's not it's actually a negative point isn't it uh we just it's the first time we've had this so and it's not there so the rule summary doesn't always summarize what I need to know. Um, if the word you've augmented turns out to be a superior word, if the word is an inferior word, you do not score any points and must reduce by one. Okay. It was a bit clunky, so that's I, I did well there. <laughs> so that's actually uh, minus one. Good, so it's one, two, three, four. So our last paragraph. Uh, I think this seems to be the most appropriate one. Pick. So let's firstly go for an embellishment. So I'll roll two dice. And that's a success. So we can embellish our, we can embellish our hopefully superior word. One, two, ooh, yep. Yeah. Excellent. We got it. So we can embellish a superior word. So my infinite, my inf, infinite, that is the right word. Um, I. Um, I, no, I offer my <laughs> heartfelt condolences to you and your whole family. And how now we get to the, the, the core of the matter. Humbly request you <laughs> um you make haste to my abode to um take care of your dear boy's corpse now let's just finish this with a penmanship is a fail so that's just two points and I didn't even use my skill once <laughs> I think I've done okay and I'm just gonna sign off yours um, sir Reginald any names from the chat room <laughs> I've got one in my mind which is ridiculous if you don't Right, fine. So, original Farquath. No, I won't <laughs> sign off with kisses. Okay, so now um, we total up our points and let's read it back. So, my sincerest Mr. Winsborough, I take great displeasure and heaviness of heart. I found your boy beneath my kitchen window. 
viewpoints. I did discover his peaceful corpse beneath the window while I was cooling a pie in the evening air. That's five points. I did immediately make haste to the honourable guard of my local ward who came with haste. I made haste twice there to inspect the corpse. That's seven points. The guard did report that the death was grimly brutal, but he died swiftly and defending himself fiercely. Six points. I offer my heartfelt infinite condolences to you and your whole family and humbly request you make haste to my abode to take care of your dear boy's corpse. Back to seven points. All right, I got less points than I thought, actually. So, <laughs> so, um, Anthony is clearly disappointed in how you have relayed the information to him. I was a bit clunky, to be fair. Um, but he does not blame you. Okay. Well, <laughs> I guess I feel okay with that. I guess I will have to be resolute in that outcome. Maybe I should have used my special ability. Um, gain one dice to a heart test. Eh, it would have not made a massive amount of difference. I could have maybe got to the eight to ten points, actually. So anyway, too late. So, I think we are done, basically. I don't think there's much more to recount there. Um, that was, I will put the finished poem up on the videos when I'm done. That was, uh, and you have there's just the empty pages here. Yep, that was the, quite wonderful, I enjoyed that. Uh, Quill, a letter-writing role-playing game for a single player, designed by Scott Malthouse. Uh, publisher Trollish Delver Games. I do believe they are on itch, but I think you can also just look up uh, Trollish Delver Games and find that. They're also on Twitter, I think, at Trollish Delver, I think was the Twitter handle. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. I had fun there, nice and short, nice and to the point. Um, and that's me done. Uh, I'll be back uh, next week with something else. I'm not quite sure what yet. I'm going to try and schedule a bit ahead moving forward. I am yet again redoing my uh, live streams a little bit. This one won't change that much, but some of the others will, actually. Um, so if you enjoyed what you saw, please subscribe however you can. Any, any of the buttons you see around the screen right now, please subscribe. Please um, let me know any comments you have. I've been getting more comments on some videos, which is quite nice. And not just spam comments. I've been getting some of those too, but that's okay. And uh, find out more about me at christianchiller.com. And until next time, uh, however many people you can bring to a table, enjoy what you play.